Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world, and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. Get off me, Remoras. That was the Gobi that did it. Shark! Hey! Wake up! What? We're on the night shift. No. No, we're not, because the fishes are sleeping too. No way! Most of the Barrier Reef doesn't even get to go to sleep, and tonight, neither do you. Besides, so many exciting things happen at night, we don't want to miss anything. Oh, OK, but it better be good. Oh, it will be. The reef at night is like a whole different universe. Shy fish becoming all bolshy, nocturnal predators coming out to play. Oh, I'm listening. Right, grab your teddy then, Barney. Today, we're on the night shift in Barney's Barrier Reef. Teddy bear. Me? As if. <laughs> It's early evening on the reef. For some fish, it's time to chill. For others, it's time to eat before they start their shift. And for some, it's time for... romance. Meet the surgeon fish. They're feeling romantic. Ooh la la. They don't sound very lovey-dovey. I mean, surgeon fish, they sound a bit clinical. Well, they're named surgeon fish because they have sharp razor blades near their tails, used to defend themselves against attackers, a bit like a surgical scalpel. Oh, OK. Go on, then. Back to the romance. I knew you'd want to hear. So, as the sun is setting, the surgeon fish gather together to woo each other. How sweet. I guess there's nothing like a sunset to inspire a bit of loving. And they do look like they're showing off. Well, what they're doing is actually rushing to the surface to lay their eggs. But why the big rush? They choose this time because the tide is going out, and as they lay their eggs, the tide will sweep them away from hungry predators, meaning their babies have more chance of survival. Aw, they think of everything these ocean lot, don't they? Practical yet romantic. Who's next on the night shift? Wow, spooky. Is this the same reef? I know. It looks like the moon. It might seem weird, but there's a good reason for it. During the day, sunlight gives the reef its beautiful colours, but at night, the coral and animals look completely different and act differently too. Wow, what are all those little balls? It's like an ocean snowstorm. Well, it's basically the coral laying eggs into the water for the eggs to be fertilised by other corals. It's quite spooky, really. Loads of the corals around the reef all spawn together. How do they know when it's the right time? They don't have watches. I know, well, it's a bit of an ocean mystery, but the moon, the sun and the tides are all kind of linked together and the corals somehow let each other know that it's spawning time. It's spawning time, it's spawning time, it's spawning time. Wow, now that is some cool coral action. The loved-up surgeon fish and the spawning corals are both nighttime romantics. Both get together and mate in the evening so the eggs have more chance of survival. <laughs> and to the left, and to the right. Is that crab doing aerobics? He does look like he's having a good old workout, eh? Or maybe he's mixing on the ocean decks. No, actually, he's just stuffing his face. What's he eating? Well, the coral are not the only clever nighttime creature. MC Crabster here is well aware that there's some tasty coral spawn to feed on. So, he's positioned himself at the top of the reef to catch it as it comes up. Ah, crafty crab. He has these funny filtering glove hands that enable him to scoop up tasty morsels, which he then puts straight in his mouth. Mm, it's like he's licking his fingers. <laughs> a little bit. Luckily, there's plenty of tasty coral spawn to go around, but for the nighttime crab feeders, it's a fabulous feast. So the coral spawning snowstorm connects us to this crafty crabster. The coral release the eggs and the crab lays in wait to snaffle some of them up for his dinner. Who else is linked to our coral? <laughs> After a hard day of swimming, feeding and remembering to come up for air, a turtle's work is done. Hello. He does look a bit tired, doesn't he? 
I'm off to bed. My work is done. Well, it is for the male turtles. Oh, here we go. All turtles work pretty hard during the day, but now it's time for the female turtles to start their night shift. And boy, if they've got a long night ahead of them. The females do a double shift. When night falls, they come onto land to nest. For the first two hours of their night shift, while the men are snoozing, the women are digging nests for their eggs. OK, is this what you call random sand flinging? Well, she is working on her own. What do you expect? I was only asking, but I see your point. She's nearly done now, though, isn't she? No! Now she lays the eggs into this chamber she's made at the bottom of her sandpit, all 120 of them. I must admit, I have a whole new respect for the female turtle. So you should. After all that hard work, she covers her eggs with sand to keep them warm. There are loads of turtles nesting on this beach, up to 20,000. That's 20,000 turtles in an island the size of about 32 football pitches. Yep, about 625 turtles per football pitch, all trying to find space for their babies. It's hard work. OK, I admit, she does all the hard work and the bloke turtle does very little. But why doesn't she do it during the day? Wouldn't that be easier? While nighttime is much safer for her and for her babies, she can lurk in the shadows and lay her eggs nice and peacefully. What can I say? Respect to the female turtles for their very busy night shift. Like the corals, the female turtles choose nighttime to lay their eggs to make sure they're as safe as possible from predators. So, the connection between the corals and turtles is nocturnal egg laying. <laughs> Have you ever really watched a fish? <laughs> well, of course. No, I mean really watch them. They're always on the go. Yeah. So when night falls, it's snooze time. But they can't be asleep. Their eyes are open. Oh, shh, Jem. They're asleep. Fish don't have eyelids, so they look awake when they're asleep. Surely it's a bit of a dangerous time for them to relax, though. Isn't this when the big boys come out to play? Oh, no problemo. They just put their pyjamas on. Good night. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose they read a bedtime story as well. Once upon a time... Yeah, right. But they do change outfits when they sleep, like this little fella here. During the day, the fusilier fish is silvery blue, but at night, he changes his colour. It's a bit like putting on a pair of red gym jams. That's the same fish. Are you sure? Yep. At night time, red is the most difficult colour to see on the water, so it helps them hide from predators. So if they don't want to be seen, they put on a different outfit? Yeah, loads of fish do it. This fella is striped yellow, black and white during the day, but at night, he turns his colour ratio right down. But what about this blue fish? He stands out a mile. He's defo going to be shark feed. No, nope, he's pretty safe. He's chosen a coral bedroom to settle down for the night. I think that shrimp's got the best idea. No one's going to argue with that toothy trigger fish. Oi, keep the noise down. So, like the turtles, sleeping fish use the colour of darkness to hide away from predators. <laughs> Aha, the parrotfish. It's an ordinary-looking fish with a mouth of steel and a sand-blasted bottom. Trust you to remember, they poo sand. Yes, the parrotfish spend the day travelling around in schools, bustling around, chomping algae off rocks, so by night time, they're pooped. I'm not surprised. Rock chomping and what goes with it, it must get tiring. Well, once night falls, they say goodnight to their buddies and search for somewhere to sleep. So, where do they go? Under rocks and stuff? Well, yes, mainly coral. Once they found a little crack or hole to snuggle into, they make their very own sleeping bag and kind of camp out for the night. That is a cool trick. How? Well, it's another fascinating use of mucus. What? You mean bogeys, don't you? <laughs> uh, in a word, Yes, they release lots of mucus and wrap it around themselves before they sleep. They make their own snot sleeping bag. I'm not sure whether to be impressed or disgusted. Well, it protects them from predators that hunt by smell, like sharks. So it's kind of a mixture of a sleeping bag and armour. And it's snot. I mean, not. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> a quick process, either. It takes half an hour to make the cocoon and almost as long to get out. And they eat their way out. I dang on, they eat their own snot. That's gross. So some fish change colour when they go to bed, but the parrotfish creates a mucus bubble shield to protect themselves from predators. <laughs> Oh, look, 
It's 11 p.m. already. I know. It's been an interesting night so far, hasn't it? We started with the surgeon fish and ended up with the dozing parrotfish. How did we get here? Well, our surgeon fish have spawned, as have the spooky coral with their ocean snowstorm. And the crafty crab are feeding on any coral mm -hmm. spawn they can grab. Whilst our hard grafters, the female turtles, are halfway through their night shift, I don't envy them. Bet you'd want to be a sleeping fish. They're getting in their zeds ready for action tomorrow. Just like the parrotfish in his snotty sleeping bag. So, who's our next sleepless sea creature? <laughs> this flamboyant fishy is called the lionfish. Ah, uh, now I understand why some fish need a snot sleeping bag. This lionfish is a swooper and a gulper. I know, look at him, look how quick he is. Sneaking up to sleeping fish and hunting from above. Alert. Move, fish. Oh, come on, you've got to move. You must see this one coming. Mmm, tasty. And for my next trick, I'm swimming upside down. Yeah. And for a fish with such a flashy headdress, he can move pretty quickly. Well, actually, his red headdress helps hide him. Just like the sleeping fish in their red pyjamas, you see, red is the best underwater camouflage. This is one nighttime hunter who knows exactly what he's doing. So while the parrotfish hides from predators, the Larry lionfish is hiding to gobble up predators. So they're connected because they both have clever ways of becoming practically invisible at night. Well, hello, grumpy face. You look like you need a coffee. Oh, you try to stay up all night. Oh. These are soldier fish. These guys are strictly nocturnal. They love staying up all night to eat. They don't look like they love anything. Cheer up, dude. Huh. They do look like they haven't slept in weeks, don't they? Yeah, their eyes are massive. Well, their eyes are so huge, so they can filter in as much moonlight as possible to help them catch their food. Microscopic <laughs> zooplankton. You took the words right out of my mouth. I could see it on the telly. Ah. I just wish they'd smile more. Well, they have been up all night and do this night shift all the time. In fact, their ancestors have been around for 50 million years, so they've been grumpy for a long, long time. So, how come these guys don't get eaten by the hungry lionfish or other predators? Well, it's that old red coat trick again. They would be seen during the day, but at night they're camouflaged by their red colouring and can nibble to their heart's content. Isn't it funny how on land the colour red can mean danger, but here it keeps fish safe? Or helps camouflage them in the lionfish's case. Another ocean wonder. The soldier fish are connected to our other nighttime nosher, the lionfish, because they both dress in red. We're still here in the ocean depths, and these are flashlight fish. So cool that they flash their lights at each other to communicate. A bit like this. This means, can I have a cup of tea? And this means, let's get on with the story. What you can see glowing is a bioluminescent pouch underneath each eye. The fish use their glow to find food and speak with each other. But what's in the pouch that glows like that? I want me some of that. Well, it's kind of a uh, special glowing bacteria. Huh? Second thoughts, maybe not. Well, can they turn it off? I mean, otherwise they might as well just say, here I am, come and eat me. Well, they have a lid that comes up from the bottom to cover their glowing pouch. Otherwise, predators would gobble them up easily. It's clever, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh. Wow, so they see by flashing each other. It's a bit like having their own car headlights. Like the soldier fish, our flashing fish have special ways of checking each other out at night. The soldier fish with their enormous eyes and the flashlight fish with their own built-in headlamps. So the connection must be that they have special tricks to let them see in the dark. <laughs> oh, these fish have some stamina, don't they? Can you do me a favour, can you pass me them matchsticks so I can keep my eyes open? Who's our next insomniac fish? Talking of spooky glow-in-the-dark things, wait till you see this fluorescent wonder. What? Coral? Have you been asleep? I uh, know. I've been finding extra cool nighttime wonders, including this one. Hmm. Allow me to explain. Now, we know that corals are naturally pretty and colourful and make the reef look very appealing. Right. This had better be good. Well, at night, corals look very different, especially when it's spawning time. Much more moon-like. OK, OK, but they still look like corals. Aha. But look at this. Whoa! They're purple and very bright. What have you done? I have used a very special ultraviolet light. Wow, that is spooky. Ooh, 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 Dr Barnacles, tell me more. OK, here's the science bit. 
Well, it's an ocean mystery why it happens, but there are several theories. Um, one is that it helps poorly coral recover by protecting it from damaging UV light. You see, corals know how to look after themselves. They can produce their own sunscreen to protect them from sunlight. So maybe being fluorescent as well is like putting on an extra shirt to protect themselves even more. Thank you, Barney. Oh, I mean, Dr. Barnacles. So, if you put a special light on these corals, they shine a bit like the flashlight fish. So, the connection is that they glow in the dark. How cool is that? Who else connects with our funny flashlight fish? Here you go. Put these on and you'll have something in common with our next sleepless wonder. What? Meet the Slipper Lobster. Indeed. What a lovely day for a stroll in the park. Ah, very clever, Gem. Except he's not a lobster. Oh, here we go, another mad reef moment. He's actually a clawless crustacean who is more related to a spiny crayfish. He looks more like a space-age Star Wars lobster. Or maybe a hovercraft. Or a giant woodlouse. Or like he's driving his own special tank. What's he doing anyway? Has he just stayed up all night to wander across the ocean? Yeah, pretty much. He's a creature of the night and feels much more confident having his stroll in the evening. He'll probably have a nibble or two until it's time to hide away. Nighttime is a popular time for crustaceans because it's much easier to surprise their prey in hidden crevices or beneath the sand. I like the strolling slipper lobster. How on earth is he connected to the flashing flashlight fish, though? Well, both flashlight fish and slipper lobster come out at night to feed. You see, there are all kinds of weird and wonderful critters out at night. OK, who's our next insomniac? Have you noticed how the reef feels so calm and peaceful during the day, with fish happily going about their daily business? Yes. Well, that's because the sharks are asleep. And that's why at night, everyone hides. Oh, no! Uh, so, hello, what are we doing up? Goodbye. Why are you shouting? Um, I'm not sure. Sharks always make me nervous. Now, this is why we're supposed to be asleep at night, Jeff. But fun is OK. Look. We're on dry land. During the day, white tip sharks are pretty lazy. I bet he's dreaming about hunting for all those little fish he's going to eat. <laughs> oh, Barney, get on with it. But once night falls, the white tips wake mm. up and all those happy fish have to hide or be eaten. Um, he can't get into that hole there, can he? Or can he? Hello, I can hear you. Oh, yes. The fish can hide all they want. Oh, no! But white tip sharks have a hidden talent which allows them to get into smaller crevices. They have indestructible skin and bendy fins that mean they can squeeze into ridiculously small spaces. Oh, no, Mr. Bluefish, you didn't hide well enough. So even if their prey hides deep in the reef, they're still in danger? Absolutely. And sharks have a super sense of smell. And if you combine that sense of smell with their extra electro senses that allow them to detect a sleeping fish's heartbeat from kilometres away, you've got no chance if you're on this shark's menu. Mm. Sharks can't swim onto the beach, Barney. But I think we can safely say they're the ultimate nocturnal hunter with a raging appetite. And just like our slipper lobster and his mates, they come out to feast once nighttime falls. It's time for a reef cap. see me? Uh, yeah, the red disguise only works underwater, duh. Oh, well, it works for the lionfish. I thought it was worth a try. He doesn't look like a lion, but he behaves like it. And talking of red, the soldierfish look like they haven't slept in weeks, but they have ways of seeing in the dark, just like the flashlight fish. Complete with their own car headlight luminescent pouches they can turn on or off. But for the ultra spooky, what about that fluorescent coral you showed me? That was cool. It glows bright purple under UV light. How about the lobster that's not a lobster, named after nighttime footwear? Now that's mad. The slipper lobster comes out at night to nosh along with the ultimate insomniacs, the white tip reef sharks. <laughs> so, who else works hard in the hours of darkness? <laughs> Wow, this shell-type geezer looks almost energetic. It's the giant triton snail, named after the Greek god Triton. The giant triton. Sounds much scarier than he is, though. 
Well, he's having a bit of a stretch before dinner. Oh, dinner? What's he going to eat? Worms and stuff? Uh, no way. He has a lot more, shall we say, toxic taste buds. What are you talking about? Well, let's just say he's starving. Really starving. Uh-huh. No, no, no way. Come on, snails don't eat sea stars, do they? Hello! Hey. Oh, yes. They eat all sorts of sea stars and sea cucumbers, too. By day, an ordinary snail. But at night, he's the deadly triton. Once he's caught the sea star, he pushes his proboscis, it's a bit like a trunk, into the body, feeding on the soft parts first. Wow. Is he really going to eat all of it? Looks like it, doesn't it? Although, because the sea star's legs can grow back, it could escape, leaving a leg or two behind for the triton to munch on. I can think of better midnight snacks, like chocolate. It's certainly not for the faint-hearted, this meal. Loads of legs, big, spiky and toxic. Well, I bet that'll fill him up for a while, then. Well, yeah, they only eat once a week. Luckily for the sea stars. And I thought only sharks were nighttime hunters. It seems like they're all at it. Yep, the white tips and the triton shell are linked because they're both nighttime predators. <laughs> ah, a lovely little seashell having a nice nighttime stroll along the ocean bed. Oh, yes, look at him. He's making friends with a fish. I know. Hello. But he's getting a bit close to Mr. Fish. He's behind you. No! He's eating it whole! Nah, that fish is a goner. You fall for it every time, Jen. He may look sweet and innocent, but he's not. He is one of the most venomous creatures in the ocean, capable of killing people. No, he can't mm. be tougher than the giant triton. He's half the size. Oh, and he's much deadlier. And night time for this geezer is pure party time. He can't see very well, so he has to smell his prey by running water through this one big nostril called the siphon. And when better than at night when his victims are sleeping. He smells by inhaling water. Cool. This one must have a great sense of smell. Look, he's on his second course. He's silent and deadly and creeps along the ocean floor on his one foot until... Goodbye! Well, until it's too late for little fishy here. But he's a snail. How can he move so far? See his tongue? Well, on the end, there's a tooth. But not just any ordinary tooth. That is a barbed tooth that stabs its prey like a poison dart. He lassoes, injects the venom which paralyzes, and then sucks his prey up. So he swallows his prey whole. Gross. And rumor has it he can start digesting his food before his prey have even died. Ugh, so he's chewing them and killing them at the same time. All this from a sea snail. Yeah, and what's more, sped up. He looks like a darling. Oh, there's something in that, you know. Sped up, he looks a lot more wicked. I just can't believe it. Another deadly snail. Yep. Like the giant triton, the cone shell is a one-footed, deadly nighttime hunter, using his special sense of smell to sniff out prey. <laughs> um, we may have encountered a breathing rock. That may or may not be an eye. And those may or may not be some teeth. I think you were right the first time. Um, I think so were you. We're looking at a stonefish, a master of disguise, a true monster of the deep. And really, really ugly. Indeed. Oi, do you mind? Is he going to sleep? Looks like he can't get comfy. And boy, does he need to be comfortable, because he may be there for a while. Sleep is the last thing on his mind. You're a nice day for it, eh, Sid? Sid, where are you? Meet one of the ocean's most convincing night tricksters. He has all the tools to disguise himself and stake out any passing prey. Thick skin covered in slimy algae to resemble a stone. Eyes that can constantly look all around them, his very own binoculars. Upturned mouth facing the surface, all the better to gulp you with. Add it all up and you get an easy meal for this geezer. They're a nighttime bottom dweller. With their algae covered slimy skin, they can hide anywhere. They're terrible swimmers, but with a mouth action like this, he doesn't care. This night hunter's prey can be history uh. in about 15 milliseconds. <laughs> Stonefish doesn't rest at night because with a gut that size, he's always hungry. But he's the ultimate master of disguise, blending into the background and lying in wait for poor, innocent fish. Now, who else could be connected with the shady cone shell? <laughs> 
why are we looking at a plant, Jim? It's all very pretty, but we've just had the gulping stonefish monster. A plant is just not going to cut the cheese. It's not a plant, it's an echinoderm. Wow, that sounds nasty. Nah, no, you've seen loads of echinoderms, but you just didn't know it. These guys are related to sea urchins, sea cucumbers, sea stars and brittle stars. Wow, they've got a lot of relatives. I bet birthdays are cool. <laughs> but unlike the other echinoderms, you won't see these guys anywhere during the day. But at night, they're all action. So why are they doing that weird floaty dance thing? They look like they're dancing to a rock ballad. That's their arms. Wow, that's a lot of arms. They have arms within their arms, these guys. They all branch together like a snowflake. OK, so what do they do with all these arms, Jeb? They hold them up in the current and catch mini micro food called plankton as it passes by. Their only tools are titchy hairs and a coating of mucus. Yummy! See, mucus again. I wonder if we're missing a trick in the human world. <laughs> oh. It's a bit like having a net with hundreds of little hands all reaching out for a bit of dinner. That's cool, but if I had hundreds of arms, I can think of a lot more interesting things to do. Like the cone shell, our handy basket star only comes out at night because he knows it's the best time to grab all the grub. The basket star also links right back to our first night critter, the surgeon fish, because they both make the most out of nighttime currents, one for spawning and one for feeding. Well, that wasn't a bad night shift at all, really. Thanks to the great company. Ah, oh, thanks, Barney. I was talking about the fish. I'll put that down to the lack of sleep. First up were our surgeon fish, who meet up at dusk to get romantic. Like our magical coral snowstorm, who spawn at night to escape predators. But there's always one freeloader, and this time it's Mr. Crab, who stays up especially to nosh on any spare coral eggs. And no one does a harder night shift than the female turtles, who lay eggs under the cover of darkness to make sure they're safe. They sure don't get a lot of snooze time, unlike our sleeping fishes. Once they put their pyjamas on, that is. But the oddest night dwelling has surely got to be the snot sleeping bag, created, slept in and then eaten by the potty parrotfish. I don't blame him when there are flamboyant dudes like the lionfish around. Ludicrous outfit, but it helps disguise him so he can sneak up from behind. The longest ship worker has to be the soldier fish. Big eyes, grumpy face, and his red coat helps him hide away. Fish with their own headlights. The flashlight fish have found a much flashier way of keeping in touch, but they can't beat the magical fluorescent coral. It's an ocean mystery. He looks like a slipper, but the slipper lobster is not a lobster. He does hunt at night, though, just like the bendy, fearless white tips who can sniff out dinner from miles away. Like the giant triton, a snail that eats spiky, poisonous, ginormous oh, no. sea stars, a bit different from your garden snail. Then there's the pretty but deadly cone shell. With its venomous toothy lasso action, no sleeping fish is safe. And if the cone shells don't get you, the stonefish will. Plug ugly, but strikes out of nowhere and so thick skin, he just doesn't care. Then there's the floaty basket star, whose many arms allow it to sway and scoff at the same time. You know, you really remind me of someone. Oh, I know who it is. It's the soldier fish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my